What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Eric Sheets, Aber. We are going to be talking through Monday's NBA slate, which is a monster slate because we're after the Super Bowl. Um, really fun Super Bowl. Uh, yep. I, you know, it's funny because I, I actually felt like I was with my family, so I, I got to seem like a real genius, apparently, because I, I said that I think the Chiefs, I think that the Eagles are the better team. And the Chiefs are just going to win in some strange way in a close game. <laughs> and that's basically what happened. Like the, the better team certainly looked like the Eagles for the most part. But Mahomes is amazing and uh, really fun game. I, I, you know, more than doubled my my money on, on DFS, which was nice because that had been a little while since I had a decent day. Uh, you know, I needed a, a Jody Fortson catch and I would have won the uh, the million with the with a couple other people who had it. Um, but it was it was a fun slate overall. You know, she real quickly t- tell us just how you did. I, I did I did really nicely in the uh, in 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 the in the showdown slate. I just I played the hundred lineups, which I've been doing all year pretty much. Uh, finished off really nicely. Uh, you know, I I think I made what's it fifty? No, I made like double my money, right? So I was yeah. in for what fifteen hundred, and I uh, and I, I cashed with thirty one hundred. I think that was really really good. I, at one point, I had a guy I had one lineup that was cashed for eight thousand or whatever it is, but. Uh, that hold on nicely. Uh, and then uh, I scored big in one of my charity box uh, things. I needed exactly thir- eight, five for Kansas city against uh, over Philly. And we, we sweated that right to the end. Uh, and that was really, really good. And finished off the football. You know what? Finished off the NFL season with a really, really good game of the two best teams. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and, you know, and, and you know what? And the two best players showed why they were the two best players. Uh, you know, listen, uh, <laughs> Hertz had the one fluky fumble, whatever, but Hertz was Hertz was freaking next level yesterday. Yeah. He was legitly amazing. And mm-hmm. Mahomes completely crippled. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like he did got exactly I'd done. Both both coaches did a very, very nice job. And uh, and it, you know what? And and as usual with Twitter at halftime, or, you know, go, go through all the tweets at halftime. You know? Everybody hates oh, him. Wow. They're getting out coached, they're getting out this. I'm like, you know, Kansas City gets the ball to start the half. Right, right. <laughs> and they missed a the field goal. Like, right. I mean, so uh, overall, you know, very, very good Super Bowl. I don't, I don't want to hear anything about the calls. I thought the referees did a, you know, over. Listen, they had a two very, very tough calls with the catches. I still have no idea what was a catch anymore. I, I don't think anybody could argue either one of them was a bad call. And the whole thing, really the, the guy freaking, the guy freaking held him. I don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, referee didn't have to make the call, but whatever. I mean, yeah. that's just, that's part of football. And, uh, and, and you know what, they didn't have to let him, you know, they, they didn't have to let him score either. You know, it's like, it's, uh, uh, they could have, you know, listen, a lot of things they could have done anyway, good, really good game, really good football season. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, I still have to stay on brand and say, I hate football, but you know what? I hate a little bit less. So yeah. That's... Yeah. No, it was a good year for me too. I had a profitable football season and now I need to turn it around but, for NBA to get back on the but, right track for my, but, as, but as, as I said in discord, I mean, now we can like, now that football's over, we can get to what's really important. That's like, you know, sweating two game LEC slates in, in, in league of legends. Oh, <laughs> Oh, and basketball and baseball too. I forgot and, about Yeah. That. Just this giant, ridiculously huge basketball slate. That big, we big basketball slate, 11 games. And you know what they said? They said there's going to be no injury news, they said. They, they released that. They're guaranteeing that all the good players are going to be playing and and all news is going to come before lock. I really appreciate that. Um, but uh, we will just see about that. Yep. Yep. Um, it should be. <laughs> I'm hoping I hope that, that 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 joke, that, that thing you said in Jess is, is, is true because yeah. there is just too many plays tonight already. All right. You ready to go through it? I, I am ready. I promise you I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's guaranteed do, to be ready. Let's do uh, Atlanta Charlotte first. And we have a bunch of cues on Atlanta. Um, I do expect Trey to play. I think that he is in consideration as a spend up. Um, that's pretty much, I mean, look, you can, you can make an argument for John Collins. There's a lot of other plays. You could also make an argument for that, that are in the same price range as Collins elsewhere on this slate. You can make an argument for Capella. Um, a con who just gets too much run for my liking. I think Mark Williams is, is the obvious chalk play of the day on the other side. And I think Gordon Hayward is fine. I don't think he's as good a play as he's currently projecting to be, but uh, this is certainly a good game environment. So if you wanted to play a LaMelo um, or even a more likely LaMelo, but LaMelo with, with either Hayward or Williams, um, I get with Trey on the other side. I got no problem with that. Sheets, any anything you'd like in this one? Yeah. So listen, so first of all, I have to be be honest. I don't want to like make people think I'm better than I am. If, if I if I come off particularly astute about with what's going on today, usually when we do these records, I'm like who's playing, who's doing yeah. what? Oh my god, this guy. 
I actually just did a full breakdown of this, you know, forgetting that I was going to do it with Bobby. So if it seems, oh my, Eric really is like on top of this stuff. It's just because I've already been through this, you know, and, and you're hitting on exactly what I was going to say. First of all, that yes, Mark Williams is showing up as, as the top overall play by a lot. They said at 4k, and what's 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 interesting about it as we get through some of these other plays, he's taking up a center spot that that you can use in other play. You know that, that you that uh, there there are other guys you might want to play there, but Mark Williams is like a thorn in your side if you want if you want to play other centers. That's one thing. Second thing that you hit on was that um, was that Lamelo is you could easily get to him and he looks like a good play. And the third thing you mentioned was that Trey Young is a perfectly legitimate uh, kind of mini stack alongside with uh, alongside of Lamelo. And the fourth thing you said, which I didn't even get till to the end of my, my breakdown before, is I did a Saberson build. And when I did a Saberson build at the end of all of it, I saw I was getting like 35% Gordon Hayward. And I was like, why am I getting 35% Gordon Hayward? I didn't even talk about him when I first went over the game. And I looked at the projection. I said, I guess, you know, so I guess it's one of those things that if it, if it was 5,100, people wouldn't think it as big of a deal. But 4,900, I suppose, makes it seem like whatever. So and I agree exactly what you said. He's like, is I guess he's a play, but on a hundred game slate, um, I don't know about that. So that's that's the last, that's the second to last thing. And I guess the other thing I want, so I want to ask you about this is like the like to you say Trey and and Lamelo alongside of Mark Williams, for example. Like you don't need like to stack the game for Mark Williams to be a play. In other words, Mark right. Williams. As a matter of fact, you could argue that if this game goes back and forth, back and forth, it's like even less. Mark Williams, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, if, so, so, so don't say, well, I, I have to play LaMelo and Trey because I want to play Mark Williams. Um, but it happens to work out really nicely. It also works out that, you know, you could get your injury news on that game and get those three, get those three, get yeah, exactly. three guys in your pocket. At least. So, so I'm totally in agreement with you on this game. And I, I don't like anything else from this game at all. Yeah. And just, we'll keep an eye on John Collins and what they do about that whole thing. Um, Cause you could even include him as well. So it's a really good game environment. It's just a, uh, just, there's a lot of things to choose from on this slate. All right, San Antonio, Cleveland. Sheets, why don't you tell me what you got here? Okay. Um, so there's some all kinds of Q tags and guys like kind of back in that were out for, for San Antonio. So you got to get a kind of handle on that. Um, but the, the top guy I have is is regardless of whether of, of, of the Keldon Johnsons or the or the Sohans, whether they're back, whatever it is, I think that's um uh what's his name? The Devontae Graham at 3,500 is, is, is the best, is the best value here. Um, uh, I like that. I actually do like, like that a decent amount. Uh, the, now the Cleveland side is kind of interesting that you, you're, I, I can, if you want to play like mid range guys on this slate, uh, I think that Mitchell really, really fits. Uh, so I do like that. And then the other one is, is the other guys is, is, is Darius Garland. So, so from this game, those are my kind of top plays. It would be um, I'm not going to play the guy, uh, the other guard, uh, Wesley or something like that. Yeah, uh, I, I learned my lesson with that one. Uh, and and the other guy I'm going to have to talk about is is Zach Collins. You know, he still looks like a really good play, but he's got position problems now. You know, because yeah. he's fighting he's fighting Mark Williams on 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 one side, Walker Kessler and Jared Allen on the other, and 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 Jokic and Embiid on the third one. You know what I mean? Right. So. So it's kind of tough, uh, but I'll tell you this, when they let him roll the other day, he was, he was freaking, he was everywhere, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so uh, I don't know. Uh, may, I, so I figure maybe if you didn't want to play, um, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mark Williams in some of your lineups, you could, you could certainly, you, you could pivot to, to, to Collins and, and be well within your rights. But remember, they're against Cleveland on the one hand where Cleveland, where, where fantasy points go to die and San Antonio as a team might die in this game also, you know, so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting game with a little couple of pieces and that's kind of what I have there. Yeah. I, I think that um, I, I do think that there's variance with the Devonte Graham and Zach Collins. Um, Collins is going to get some minute. I mean, he'll get his 20 some odd minutes, but we don't know if we, like, it, it seems like they had, they played him like 30 that one game. I don't know if that's going to happen here, but they do need to have more size on the court just to match up with, with Cleveland. So I'm sort of, I'm sort of struggling with what to do with Zach Collins, because like you said, you could, you could, there's other good plays at center too, but you could play Zach Collins with Mark Williams too, and just uh, use up your center spot right away, which not ideal, but I'm open to it. 
Uh, I do think Graham is probably the most interesting play on, on San Antonio, but I don't love the chalkiness. Like this feels like he's being a little bit, a little bit too high owned for what is a high variant situation. I feel like, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll revisit that one later. Cause I do think he's a good play. I, I think that both bigs for Cleveland are really good plays sneakily. And again, it's very hard to find the center spots to not use the value on the center spots, but Jared Allen's in a really good spot. I think Mobley's the better play because you can use him at forward. Um, and then I would, I would definitely consider Mitchell or Garland, but I, I don't think that they're priorities for me as of right now. Um, the other thing I would say also, this is, this is kind of more of a basketball thing. This is actually really cool. So with the concept of Cleveland's where fantasy points go to die and Cleveland's really good at defense, and all this stuff like that. Here's something I don't know if you knew. Um, I didn't know this until the, until they started, until I watched this game. One of the things about watching NBA league pass or whatever is you get to see some of these like home home announcers and you get to see stuff that happens on the court. So I was watching the Cleveland game and and they got called for a defensive three seconds. Okay, so Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, but when they get called for a defensive three seconds, the whole team like pumps their fist and goes crazy. Like Jared Allen, like yells and like and like and like flexes. Because they have such this this concept of packing the lane and not yeah. allowing anybody there that they're proud when they get the defensive three seconds call. That's so freaking cool. That you know what so I mean? Crazy. So, so with that said, don't I'm not playing anybody against this freaking team. Um, but yeah. what that means also is you maybe maybe you can give up a three or two, but but I'm not I'm not playing penetrators into that into that narrative. Right. Um, so that's pretty much what I, I want to just throw that in there. Yeah, makes sense. Um all right, uh, Utah and Indy, we've got like, so both Sexton and THT are really hard to ignore. Um, I, 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 the edge is for, for Sexton for me, cause I feel secure and I actually feel like, you know, I don't need to save at every position. Uh, THT though, it's kind of hard to ignore what he's been doing. Uh, you know, 40 fantasy points last time out, 32 the game before without even shooting the ball. Well, the assist numbers are great. Um, so I, I'm on board with uh, with both these guys as of right now. And I think Olenek being popular, I would, if he has any ownership, I'll probably just skip him. If he doesn't have any ownership, I'm definitely interested a little bit. Um, not getting to a ton on the other side, even though I think that they're they're decent. And Matherin, um, Halliburton, I expect to play. I think Halliburton might be a sneaky good good tournament play. But not getting to as much as you'd think. That just maybe because there's so many games here. What, what about you on the on the Utah game? game? Yeah. So uh, that's this is another one. I blasted through this game and then I forgot until the very very end how well Taylor Horton Tucker projected. Had to go back and mention him. Um, yeah, he's projected to be the second, you know, right right behind um, uh, Mark Williams, and he, I have him projected a forty percent ownership. Taylor Horton Tucker uh, seems like something you shouldn't be doing. Uh, I, I don't, you know, it just, it just seems like a play you shouldn't be making um, on a, on a, on a hundred game slate, but I mean, it's, there's no denying the projection. I mean, listen, I shouldn't say that the projection is what it is. doesn't mean he's going to actually do it. Um, so th- I mean, it just seems, it seems weird to play him at 43% ownership, but like you said, there's no denying what he's been doing. Um, other guys from Utah, like you mentioned, Colin Sexton, he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot more often. So he makes sense. And yeah, you want, you want the big freaking, the, and you mentioned Olenek. He's good because of the position. You could play him at power forward as well. Um, but the guy, again, like if you can hold your nose and get through it, it's, this is like your invention, man. This is like the, the wall, this is like the Walter Kessler sub 10% game because of position problems that, you know, position problems, whatever, when he gets 50, you know what I mean? Like nobody cares what Mark Williams gets, you know what I mean? Um, so that's that's kind of a, a cool thing to do. I listen, people are gonna play Taylor and Horton Tucker, makes certain perfect sense. They'll play Sexton. Uh maybe Kessler is is just kind of the hoodoo there. And for Indiana, you you hit you hit my opinion right on the head. I don't really get much except for the for the Benedict. He's like he's my favorite of of the uh the Indiana of the Indiana guys. Ooh, I I think you muted yourself. Sorry about that. I was doing that. Yeah. They were power washing over there. It was yeah. crazy. Um, but I do. I I I I agree with the Kessler thing. Um, I I think that's that's another interesting pivot you can make at center, and and you could build a fairly chalky lineup with Kessler in it, and and be pretty sure that almost nobody's duplicating you because there's a tough one to play, man. But he's a really good play though. Like I mean, yeah. he's even projecting is a really good play. Thirty. Just protect. Listen. 
when you play Kessler and then you like you see Twitter go crazy that Mark Williams got his second foul in the first three minutes, you're going to be like, let's go. You know what yeah, I mean? like, exactly. Absolutely. I mean, and, and the thing is that I love about Kessler is like he literally doesn't need the ball. He doesn't need to score. He can get the, he can do it from rebounding and block shots alone. And he occasionally has these crazy block shot games. I, I think that's a really good idea is, is something like a Kessler tonight. I, I think I'm going to get on board with that. All right. Uh, Houston and Philadelphia. Okay. I don't know what to do with this one. Um, my, my first lean is I think that Ja'Shawn Tate is fine, but I'm not going to probably do it. I would rather go the other way with THT. I actually think Embiid is going to just absolutely smash here, but I don't really know, like, if I want to, I want to use that center spot for him there. Um, and, and I think Harden is fine, uh, against his former team who was in Houston. Maybe I'd give a little bit more edge to that. I don't know. Um, mostly though, I'm kind of off this game and that, that feels kind of wrong. You know, what's, you know, what's weird, what makes it uncomfortable to play Embiid is not, not so much the center thing, although it is. But you also have to play two guys at center and, and you have to take care of the utility spot at seven o'clock PM. You know what I mean? Right, like right. you got to play Mark Williams and Embiid. And then now you're like, okay, hope nothing good comes up later. Right. Uh, you know? So that's what makes it hard, which is it possible that Embiid is low owned as a result of all that? I think uh, he'll end up like 10 or 10, somewhere, somewhere in a 10 to 20. I don't know which range yet. Depends on yeah. what people like, but I think it's going to be somewhere in that range. I do think he'll I mean, be a little bit. I mean, but I think they have, I mean, there's blowout risk, I guess. Um, but, but he's, he's, he's the highest projected play on my board. Um, yeah. It's just a tough construction thing. And I think Harden could be kind of a cool, uh, uh, kind of a cool tournament play also. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Houston, it's funny you hit. It's, it took me forever to come up with that. Like the the only guy that I even look at is the uh, is the, the Sean Tate. And what makes him work is that he can play small forward. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's not. I don't think it's particularly a great play or anything like that. I mean, there's literally no no. Uh, is there any game where you're like so psyched that you had him? I mean, no. I don't know. You know. So uh, I'll probably end up not playing. But if you had to play Houston guys, I think that's. I mean, if you if you loved every other part of your lineup and you had thirty five hundred left at at at, at uh, small forward or something, then fine, I like it. But I wouldn't just go out of my way. Okay, I'm gonna start my lineups with Shante. Yeah, I mean, they're gonna play. They'll play Knicks as well. They'll play Ty Ty Washington. Um, it's the minutes seem to go like all over the place for Houston. So I don't think it's some like smash play. But I, if he's starting, I certainly don't mind having some exposure. All right, uh, let's talk about Denver and Miami. Uh, this is probably going to be a stay away game for DFS purposes on the Denver side for me. Uh, again, we have the the Jokic. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, it, it's it's just like I, I'm just not going to be. What happened? Did I miss it? Oh, there he is. Um, I just don't think I'm going to be able to get to Jokic in a tough matchup uh, at 12K, where you have Embiid, who's actually projecting better, who's cheaper in a better matchup. Um, so I think I'm pretty much, I, I think I'm going to be off unless, unless Murray and or Gordon are out. And I think if Murray's out, we know the drill. You can go back to Gordon. You can actually go. I think even Jokic will, will project a lot better too. But if, if Gordon and Murray are out, I think Bruce Brown is a tremendous play. And even if Mur just Murray's out, I still think Bruce Brown is in play. Just not, not a great play unless both those guys are out. I think everybody's going to play who's, who's like listed for, for as questionable for Miami. They're all probable. That is not, that is not true, sir. Uh, for Miami. Yeah. You have the heroes doubtful. Yeah. Yeah. I meant of everybody who's questionable. I, I'm, I'm counting heroes out. Oh, okay. So I was, I was, I was, I was accounting for, for him. As oh, okay. My bad. Um, I have him, I have him as out on my, my Oh, okay. I just had him as questionable, sir. My bad. Um, but that makes uh that, you know, makes Gabe Vincent a play. And it makes Max Struss my, the preferred play for me. I just don't like playing chalky Max Struss. Like I love, I love playing him when when he's the lower owned of the of the value guys. He's playing. He plays a million minutes. He's a, he's pretty th much only three point reliant. Although his assist numbers kind of come and go. Um, so I'm just deciding what I want to do with that. But Struss and, and Vincent are both fine. Um, I, I'm Struss definitely looks like a better play to me, but. I'm okay getting to some Vince and I just don't want to go crazy with it. And Jimmy Butler is, this is a game, a, a matchup where I, I think you could play Jimmy Butler. So that's where I'm at. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, so, so I play, I've been playing Jimmy Butler um, recently. Very, very frustrating to play him when, when he's doesn't really feel like putting up fantasy points. Yep. Um, he, he scored 46 fantasy points in his last game, but just barely in overtime. Okay. <laughs> 
played only 34 minutes, by the way, uh, in overtime, uh, which is a little annoying. Yeah, uh, I didn't know what happened in that one. That was really I don't weird. either. I'd have to check the the, the popcorn machine. But um, with no hero, I mean, I have to ask you about this, but I mean, they're playing like one of the top teams in basketball yeah. at home. I mean, this to me seems like the perfect opportunity for Butler to do his thing if he can do it. Um, so uh, I, I think I'm just kind of trapped into this Butler loop right now mm -hmm. where uh, where I might play. He did he did put up 49 against uh, against Milwaukee on the road, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, so tough he, games, that's when you want him. He does have it in him. So uh, I, I, I actually like him here. I, I think he's going to, unfortunately, with Hero out, I think he's going to end up being popular. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, and the other guy that you mentioned was Struess. Uh, uh, yeah, and and as far as Denver goes, Jokic fills up that 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 center spot uh, where in a game where and it's against a team where fantasy points go to die. It's uh, it's tough to play. It really, really is. Um, and look, look like you said, watch for the news. If any of these guys are out, you know, then we play. Basically, if anybody's out, you play probably Michael Porter Jr. Right. Um, and uh, if Murray's out, then if Murray's out, it is kind of hard to fade Jokic, though, isn't it? I mean, well, I, I think that Jokic is still a really decent play. Like, I, I still don't think he's going to have crazy ownership because of the Embiid situation and right. you know, all the other set in the uh, cheap centers. Right. So I think he'll actually become a good tournament, a really good tournament. I think he's a still a fine tournament play. And you, like, you can't really argue with it. He's always a good tournament play, but it does seem like right. a type of matchup for him. Um. But yeah, I, th I think it's going to be more interesting than Miami side for sure in that one. Uh, Brooklyn and oh, you got you got the little rivalry game here. Sheets, what do you what? Do you, yeah, what do you... you know what? It's a fun game. Everybody likes you know they they like this game and everybody gets to like try out their 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 new lineups now, right? Uh, their new teams. Uh, so no more Durant and there's the, there's Dinwiddie here uh, for Brooklyn. All seems like a pretty fun game, but I don't have much as far as fantasy goes for some reason. Um, yeah. Not really getting to much of anything. Uh, if anything, I have Randall as the best play for New York, but uh, I just got better plays. So I'm just going to just sit, watch, and root, and that's pretty much it. We are on exactly the same page. I think this is a uh, yeah fun real life game, but there's just there's too many bodies for Brooklyn to, for me to have interest in anybody regularly. I think they just have they played so many guys and they have so many wings. It's 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 kind of tricky. Um, I do think that like one thing that should be like noted, like I I, I don't know what they're going to do, but just keep an eye out for the Cam Thomas thing. This is not the kind of slate you want to take this kind of chance, but Cam Thomas is going to have a wide range of minutes. You're going to see like some 12 minute games. And I think you're going to see some mid thirties games as his price comes down. We should just keep an eye on him going forward and use him as like a wild card play on small slates because he's, he's a guy who has, as we know now can really score. It's kind of strange that they would put him, like he's projected to play 19 minutes tonight. I don't think that should be his median or 20 minutes tonight. I think his median minute projection should be somewhere in like the, the high 20s. And he's being treated in the low 20s because he played one 18 minutes in one game. Um, that's just one thing I wanted to keep an eye out for for the rest of the year. All right. Um, Orlando and Chicago, right? Yeah. The only thing I have from this game, I, I didn't get to any of the spend. I didn't get to, to, to Rosen. Step two kind of like, semi fishy values one from each side like caruso who i just don't i've never i've never gotten there playing him um but showing up as an okay point per dollar play on the other side uh, jalen suggs uh again real cheapo i've actually had better with him somehow um mm -hmm. so I, I don't look they're very deshaun tady to me i don't think we have to play these guys but uh i think that you can certainly get to them yeah suggs is is going to 10x some of the time here um, which is enough of a reason why at low ownership, why he, he could, you could argue for him as a, as a reasonable value play when there's lots of other good value, but uh, how about a little Wendell Carter revenge? You know, we talked about, uh, we talked about the, uh, what's his name? Um, the, 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 if you want to get really creative with your center position, which I don't think you're going you're gonna to do, but maybe on FanDuel where you can use these guys at power forwards and stuff um Wendell Carter's super cheap it's going back to Chicago there's definitely some upset like I, I think I think I think Chicago would rather just have Carter over Vucevic period much less everything else all the first rounders they gave up um it's just mildly interesting I thought I'd throw it out there anyway um hmm. but nothing on the uh nothing on, nothing really like grabbing me uh I think DeRozan's at a price point where it's almost like I want to play him I think he's very similar play to Butler tonight um 
but I, I, I think they're probably just going to be off of this one mostly tonight. Uh, maybe, maybe some Suggs and uh, maybe Wendell Carter in a lineup with Mark with a uh, with the uh, Walker Kessler, just the fifty six and fifty seven hundred guys, and skip the four K guys or something like that. Um, all right, let's talk about the uh, Pelicans and OKC sheets. What do you got? Yeah, so um, on the New Orleans side, uh, when when you're talking about mid range guys, I talked about uh, Don. We talked about Donovan Mitchell a little bit earlier. I did, but 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 Brandon Ingram rates to be for me at least the best of like the, the mid range plays out there, um, mm-hmm. and and. Uh, the other one is that he's not projecting all that well, like at all. I guess he really hasn't done anything recently, but, but CJ McCollum at 7,700 um, against the OKC. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that, that he could at really, really, really low ownership. He could be kind of a contrarian play. Um, there was also a point per dollar play I had from New Orleans. that are just, ah, Josh Richardson is 3k. Um, I don't know what's, what's going on here. Um is, is he even is he going to play? I and mean, it says he looks to make his Pelicans debut in Oklahoma City. I mean, if he's 3K and playing, I mean, you have to play him, don't you? I mean, even if he's like, oh, even if he's just coming off the bench, I mean, he's three freaking K. I mean, I don't know. Well, why, why do we want to play him over the other guys? Like, he's lower usage than every other value we've talked about. Really? Um, yeah, and he was playing in uh, for a team that had nobody who could create shots, and now you have the opposite. Like, you, you, they've got three got three guys who run out your offense through who play a million minutes in McCollum, Ingram, and Valanciunas. Herb Jones will play as many minutes as he can handle. Trey Murphy will play a ton. Najee Marshall, Larry Nance, Jose Alvarado. So you're talking about the nine man potentially, maybe the ten man on a team. Okay. So so unless he's like starting, if he's starting, he's all not that- starting. There's just no way he's starting. The only way he starts is if they put Trey Murphy on the bench. There's but just no way he's starting. Um, um, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it's a wild card GPP play at best for me right now. Okay. But and no uh, ownership, I'll take a shot. Like, yeah. Uh, and OKC, okay, I mean, you could always play Shea at, at 2% here. Um, uh, I guess that's all I have to say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Lou Dort is 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 a little too cheap probably, but not like the funnest play on a big slate to make. Um, and I think everybody else is just going to sort of be mad for me. I think Giddy and, and and Shea, like we say it every day, but you can always play one of them. I, I'm not all overly interested in them though tonight. Right. Um, Minnesota Dallas. Um, one thing to keep an eye out for is Dallas is going to play quicker now. Hang on one second. I got. Okay. I need okay. like two minutes. Yeah, you got it. And we're back. All right. So we were t- we were about to start talking about the uh, Minnesota Dallas game, I believe. Yeah. So All this right. is this is my this is my take, and you could you could you could correct me. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Until he proves otherwise, I'm I'm not playing Luca at these prices with Kyrie on the floor. All right. It's just not working. Um. Uh. I know Luca's the greatest and all this stuff. Uh. He's just not had a situation like this, and it's probably good for the team in general, whatever. But Kyrie on the floor is along with Luca. To me, just feels like those Harden slash Durant Kyrie games where, it, where until until Luca shows me one game of like sixty plus with Kyrie next to him, I'm not doing it. So so he's projecting pretty well, whatever it is. That's just that's just my opinion, uh, and and, I, and of course I'm, I can't play Kyrie at ten three for the same thing, um, and I'm not playing anybody in Dallas, uh, mm-hmm. and Minnesota. Uh, just I'm just not seeing anything projected well for me, so I'm probably off of this game. What do you think of that? What do you think of of this game? Uh, it, and I'll leave it to you. On this big slate, I would tend to agree with you. Um, I, I do think like a, I'll, I think he's still going to be right around sixty so much of the time. Like I, I, I'm okay with it. It's such a good matchup. But I, I don't feel the need to try to force him in today. Um, if he stays really low on, maybe I'll take a shot. But I kind of agree with the overall thing, your overall sentiment. I do think he'll, like, he'll have some some monster games, but it's not like he's going to have the fifty percent usage rates um, when he's hot like he did before. It's going to probably he's probably got a ceiling usage rate of forty, where he used to have it like he was. He had a usage rate of like sixty in some games. <laughs> it's just, like nuts. Um, so I'm 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 sort of with you, and the only way I'm, I'm probably doing much in this game is if if Gobert and Anderson are out, which I'm guessing they both play because they played the last game. 
Um, and I think they're limited enough to where I'm not going to play either either of them. I just don't want to play those guys. Um, so I'm basically, uh, you know, all of this, though, my favorite play in this game is probably Jaden McDaniels. And I just don't think I need to do that today. Yep. All right. Washington, Golden State. Yep. For me in this, for me in this game, not a lot. Uh, I have Jordan Poole as, as a similar type of play to Ingram just for the price. Um, and so if you want to go mid range, you could do that. Uh, aside from that, nothing here really, uh, really, really was playable for me. Uh, what about you? I think this game's line is ridiculous. I don't think there's any reason the Warriors should only be favored by three. <laughs> um, I know Washington's better when they have all their guys, and it looks like they will tonight. But I, I really am surprised by the line being only three. And I think that uh, you know it's it's uh, it's a great it's a good matchup for both teams. Like Bradley Beal is 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 never like I, not a guy I've talked about basically all year long. Um, I could see him having a good game in this matchup. He's been really good the last couple times out, and the usage was amazing the last game at 36%. But the problem is Kuzma is going to be back now or should, should be back, which should cut into a little bit of that with Beal. So probably not going to play the Washington side, but I, I am open to the Beal idea. And then I like Jordan Poole. I'll play Jordan Poole at 7,800. I don't care. Um, that's, I have no problem with that, with that price tag. I think play is a really good tournament play. This is a, this is a good matchup for shooters. So I would take some shots with these guys. And I think Draymond's an in-between play. So I actually like this game maybe more than other people do with my favorites being uh, Poole and uh, Poole followed by Clay, followed by uh, Draymond. And keep it, you know, Wiggins may may end up sitting this one. I'm not 100% sure he plays. Um, but I, but I, I like this game environment and it's a later game. So may, maybe maybe having those guys as placeholders is not a bad idea. Um but I, I, either way, even if it's not a placeholder, I do think Jordan Poole is completely in play at 7,800 is reasonable. And I think for Beal, 7,600 is reasonable. And I think for Clay, even 8K is reasonable because he's going to shoot it a million times. Jordan Poole, I mean, he, he like the projection isn't there, whatever. Like, I don't know why it isn't. He's, you know, what, his last, he had the one really weird game in the blood game against Dallas. But other than that, like he's 46, 52, 50, the last three games he's played, I'll take that at 7,800. And I think this is a good matchup for him. So I'm on board with Poole mostly. That's my favorite play in this game. And I'm going to note him here because I actually think that I need to spend money somewhere. It feels like I need to, to at least I have a guy I can finally spend on. Um, all right. Uh, Lakers and Portland. Okay. Um I, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm I'm not coming across anything on the Lakers that I that I love. Uh, I like are you presuming them. Are you presuming LeBron in or not? As of right now, I am. Yeah, um, I think that he plays tonight. I think he's okay if he plays. If he doesn't play, obviously I play AD. Um, and I think that again, you have the Watford or Eubanks you could take a shot on, but they, they're just worse versions at center of the other guys we talked about. So um, I'd like to get some exposure to these later games. Maybe, maybe you do the Lillard and LeBron thing if you if you want to, but I I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of having a hard time finding where I want to spend my money today. I have a bunch of value plays and not a bunch of guys I really want to spend up for. What do you have in this one, Chief? Yeah, I got a couple of things. First of all, yeah, Eubanks has the same issues as 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 other centers that we t- we talked about. Um, he's just not as good of a play as as Mark Williams, and it's it's not even close. You know, um, well, okay, is it not close? I th- actually maybe it is, uh, maybe it's close given two percent ownership versus sixty. Uh, yeah. So, and he actually might fit into a stat. Oh my god, am I going to fade, f- f- fade Mark Williams hoping to hoping to play you? I don't. Know, we'll talk about that later. Uh, Lillard, I think is very you know I think he's very reasonable. Um, I, the Lakers I and mean, they play they play at least what I've seen they played fast and if. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is is D'Angelo Russell now on the team? D'Angelo Russell is on the team. Yes. Okay. So even less defense. Um, it's so, really weird though because I like I'm looking at, at like at Roto Grinders and NBA, and they neither of them have LeBron in, by the way, which is okay. weird. So I, I'm 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 projecting him as out. Okay, that's interesting. Now now, but here's the thing: like when I project him as out. I'm seeing Davis as like a, like a really good play, but not just you know what I mean, but not like a not, not like as good of a play as Embiid, like for example, right. uh, which you think he would be, I would think. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So may, maybe maybe I'm just getting kind of one of those middling projections. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm getting one where like, they think he might, that LeBron might play. You know, so maybe 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 if, if LeBron was definitely not playing, Davis would be more like 56, 57 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the 53 where I have him, that's possible. Yeah. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to play LeBron here. I'll play, I'll consider playing AD if LeBron is out, but wh when, when does that news come? Considering that Davis is a center, you know, it's uh it's certainly coming after, not certainly, but if that comes after you have to make a decision on Mark Williams and Embiid and Jokic, for example, you know, uh, what are you going to do? I mean, you'll end up, what you'll end up with, by the way, if if they do announce LeBron out like an hour before game time, you'll get if you if you somehow save the spot, you can get Anthony Davis at maybe one percent ownership when he's a smash play. You know right, I mean? it's, it's very possible. No, it's uh, true. Uh, but I got one for you. I, listen, right. I haven't I haven't lost money on this guy in a while. Um, but yeah, you can play Watford and all the all these cats. But but Cam Reddish starting at three K. Um, they started him on Friday. They played him like fifteen to twenty minutes. Not like a big deal. But he was very reasonable. Um, and uh, I don't know if, you, if you've got nothing else to do. Uh, definitely seems showdown-y to me. But uh, I just noticed it as I was just watching and looking at him. I see him literally 3K and it started on Friday. Right. Um, I think it was Friday. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, aside, that's, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much what I got. Yeah, it's we. Um, I, I'm I would be more inclined to just play Shaden Sharp instead because okay. the, those minutes are going to go to him more than they will to Reddish. But there will be some times at 3K where Reddish will get there. And what I do like about it, Sheets, is if you're going to play some guys in the later games, like let's say I wanted to play Pool and Veal, and then I threw Reddish in there, it just gives me some maneuverability if if That's you know true. other news comes out. So I, I don't mind him today because of the time the game's starting. Literally, that's the reason I don't mind him. I, I'm I'm not going – my plan is not to play him. I see him as a placeholder play. But I certainly – you know, he's 3K, he's starting. There's always – I'll, I'll tell you, it's pretty cool. Like, December 3rd was the last time he played a game. Yeah. And, and, and he just – I guess he just sat. And then they picked him up, and his first game they started. I, I don't know what I don't I, I'm still like they're really trying to to figure out a way to rebuild I, I don't know like it with with guys who sort of busted for who were early picks but it's not like, but, but it's not like they played him a lot and but it's not like he did anything wrong either you know he was two for five from three two yeah. rebounds two assists three fouls that's 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 certainly no bargain but yeah like you said they're probably just experimenting with a lot of different things and, yeah I think so and I think that they're gonna I think Sharp is I think they, they love Shaden Sharp and I think they're gonna try and give him more and more minutes as the season goes along so I would side more with him, and, and I think that they're going to play three guard lineups a lot of the time, especially against this Lakers team, which lets you do it pretty easily. Right. So that's what I've got. So I've got my priorities on this slate. Actually, I've got you know Sexton, Tht, um, uh, Mark Williams, uh, Zach Collins, Devonte Graham, Max Struss, Jimmy Butler. I do like Suggs a little bit more maybe than the field will Ingram and Jordan Poole. Um, I like, I think that my spending range is going to be between the seven K's and the and seven K up to 8,500 or something. And I don't think I'm going to be spending all the way up unless I end up playing Anthony Davis, um, it, you know, as a later play, but mostly I think I'm staying in that seven to eight K range as my spend ups. How about you? Yeah. Now, if you did that, like I said, I would go back to the, 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 uh, Ingram and pool, like you just mentioned, or those are the mm -hmm. two, uh, and then maybe, maybe take one of those Clevelands. And if you're going to play in that range, Butler at 8,400 yep. works. Uh, he might, I don't know what his ownership is going to be, but. Uh, yeah. And then like, if you want it, you still want to play mid range. You want to, to really just gamble at center. Jared Allen. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard. Or no, Kessler. I, yeah. Kessler, let's go. It's, it's a Walker Kessler. I, I'm, not, I'm not hating that play. I'm really not. Um, and, and just to, just to throw it out there, because I did take a look at FanDuel also. Oh, okay. Um, guys like Matherin and Hayward make more sense over there because you don't have the same extreme value. Um, like Horton Tucker is 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 going to be even more popular. Struss is going to be even more popular. But Mark Williams fifty two hundred over there and center only eligible. So there there is there is a little it's a little bit of a different build. Guys like Levine, Clarkson, um, Terry Rozier show up a little bit more on on the. Uh, the the fan duel builds but i'll cover that stuff at six eastern yep i am uh probably out okay uh, 
Um, but if I am, it'll be only for a little bit. Uh, if I'm in, if I'm there, it's only for a little bit. But uh, I am planning on the 11 p.m. Awesome. Uh, sweat of the of the of the of the marquee matchup between uh, Anthony Davis and Cam Reddish. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Well, hopefully, I'll be able to join you then, and uh, we'll see you guys live at 60. I'll see you live at 60 Eastern either way. Good luck, everybody.